Hello children. Do you like stories? Today we have a story named Golu Grows a Nose written by Rudyard Kipling. Let's read and enjoy. Let's read the story. Long long ago, the elephant had no trunk. He had only a bulgy nose as big as a boot. He could wiggle it from side to side. Wiggle means to move in irregular motion but couldn't pick up things with it there was a baby elephant called golu he too had no trunk but only a bulgy nose as small as a small boat golu was full of questions he asked his tall aunt the ostrich why don't you ever fly like other birds then he asked his tall uncle the giraffe What makes your skin so sporty? Sporty means having sports. He asked his huge uncle, the hippopotamus, why are your eyes always so red? He asked his hairy uncle, the baboon, why do melons taste like melons? The ostrich, the giraffe, the hippopotamus and the baboon had no answers to Golu's questions. Golu is a naughty boy, they said. He asked such difficult questions. One day, Golu met the minor bird. sitting in the middle of a bush and he asked her what does a crocodile have for dinner the miner said go to the banks of the great grassy limpopo river and find out so children there was a time when elephants had no trunk they only had a bulgy nose and it was difficult for them to pick things they could only move it from side to side but couldn't put it to any real use A baby elephant named Golu had no trunk either. He was full of questions. He asked his tall aunt, the ostrich, why didn't she ever flew like other birds? Then he asked his tall uncle, the giraffe, what made his skin so sporty? And he asked his huge uncle, the hippopotamus, why were his eyes always so red? He asked his hairy uncle, the baboon, Why did melons taste like melons? According to the ostrich, the giraffe, the hippopotamus and the baboon, Golu was a naughty baby as he asked all of them questions to which they had no answer. But he kept asking everybody difficult questions. Once he asked the miner if it knew what crocodile had for dinner. Miner directed Golu to go to Grassy Limpopo River to find out for himself let's see if golu goes or not golu went home he took a hundred sugar canes 50 dozen bananas and 25 melons then he said to his family goodbye i'm going to the great grassy limpopo river i will find out what the crocodile has for dinner he had never seen a crocodile and didn't know what one looked like he met a python and asked him Have you ever seen a crocodile? What does he look like? What does he have for dinner? The python uncoiled himself. Uncoil means unwind. Coil means something uh, would in the form of a spiral. Uncoiled is the opposite of the word coiled. Unwind. Uh, here the python uncoiled himself from the branch of a tree but said nothing. Golu politely helped him to coil around the branch again and said goodbye to him. Golu moved on eating sugar canes, bananas and melons. After a few days, he reached the very edge of the great grassy Limpopo River. On the bank of the river, he saw a log of wood. In order to find out what crocodile has for dinner, Golu decided to go to River Limpopo. He took a hundred sugar canes, 50 dozen bananas and 25 melons. Then he said to his family goodbye and he also told them he was going to the great grassy Limpopo river and he would find out what the crocodile had for dinner since Golu had never seen the crocodile he was confused what it looked like on his way Golu met the python Golu asked the python if it had seen the crocodile and knew what he had for dinner python uncoiled itself from the tree but didn't say anything Golu helped python coil around the branch again and moved on. After a few days of walking, Golu reached the edge of the great grassy Limpopo River. There he saw a log of wood. Let's move on to the next paragraphs. It was really the crocodile who winked at him. "Excuse me," said Golu. "Have you ever seen a crocodile?" 
the crocodile winked again and lifted half his tail out of the mud. Come here, little one, said the crocodile. Why do you ask such questions? I want to know. Come close, little one, for I am the crocodile. And he shed crocodile tears to show it was quite true. Crocodile tears. What does the crocodile tears mean? Have you heard about the idiom crocodile tears? It means an insincere display of grief. The idiom crocodile tears is derived from an old legend that states that crocodiles cry while eating their prey. Crocodiles blow out large quantities of air while eating and that can cause their eyes to tear up. They are not actually crying though. If I say when my daughter doesn't get what she wants, she cries crocodile tears. It works every time. That means she is not crying actually. She is acting, she is crying. So here he shed crocodile tears to show it was quite true. Golu was afraid, but he sat down on the bank and said, You are the very person I was looking for. Please tell me what you have for dinner. Come here, little one, and I'll whisper the answer to you, said the crocodile. Golu put his head down close to the crocodile's snout. Snout means a long projecting nose. And the crocodile caught him by the nose. I think, said the crocodile, today a baby elephant will be my dinner. Let me go, you are hurting me, Mr. Crocodile, screamed Golu. The python, who had been quietly following Golu, came to the bank and said, If you do not pull as hard as you can, the crocodile will drag you into the stream. Oh my god, our Golu is in trouble. Then he reached the bank of the river and he saw a log of wood. There he saw the original crocodile. But not knowing who he was, Golu asked him if he knew where the crocodile was. The crocodile winked at Golu and introduced himself as the one whom Golu was looking for. Golu then put his question to the crocodile asking him what he had for dinner. The crocodile asked Golu to come near him so that he could whisper the answer to Golu's question in the ear. As Golu put his head close to the crocodile, the crocodile caught him by the nose. Golu began to scream and begged the crocodile to let him go. The python tried to guide Golu by telling him that he must pull himself as hard as possible else the crocodile would pull him into the stream. What Golu is doing? Let's see. Golu sat back on his little haunches. Haunches, that means the area encompassing the upper thigh. So Golu sat back on his little haunches and pulled and pulled. The crocodile slipped into the water making it all creamy with great sweeps of his tail and he also pulled and pulled. Then the python coiled himself round Golu's stomach and said, let's pull harder. Golu dug in all his four legs in the mud and pulled. The nose kept on stretching. At each pull the nose grew longer and longer and it hurt Golu. The nose was now five feet long but it was free at last. Then Golu pulled himself and harder with the help of the python. The crocodile too dragged Golu harder into the stream. The python too coiled himself around Golu's stomach and tried to help Golu in the act of pulling. However, Golu's nose kept stretching and grew longer and longer and it began to hurt Golu. Finally, Golu freed himself but his nose was now five feet long. It doesn't matter, at least he escaped. Golu sat down with his nose wrapped up in a big banana leaf and hung it in the great grassy Limpompo river to cool. Golu sat there for two days waiting for his nose to cool and to shrink. It grew cool, but it didn't shrink. At the end of the second day, a fly came and stung Golu on the shoulder. Golu lifted his long nose, that means trunk, and with it hit the fly dead. So here Golu waited for his nose to shrink. He wrapped his nose in a big banana leaf and hung it in the great grassy Limpompo river to cool it. He kept waiting for two days for his nose to cool and shrink. However, his nose only cooled but 
didn't shrink. A fly sat on Golu's shoulder. Golu lifted his long nose and with it hit the fly dead. Advantage number one. He's the python. You couldn't have done it with a small nose. Try and eat a little now. Golu put out his trunk and plucked a large bundle of grass. He dusted it against his forelegs and stuffed it into his mouth. Advantage number two. He's the python. You couldn't have done it with a small nose. Don't you think the sun is too hot now? Golu scooped, scooped dig out with a ladle. Golu scooped up some mud from the bank and slapped it on his head. Advantage number three. He's the python. You couldn't have done it with a small nose. Thank you, Mr. Python, said Golu gratefully. I'll remember all this and I'll go back to my family. Here, Python immediately pointed out that he could not have done this with a small nose because uh, with long nose, Golu hit the fly dead. So having a long nose was an advantage. When Python asked Golu to eat something, Golu plucked a large bundle of grass with his long nose. The Python pointed it out as the second advantage of the long nose. Since it was too hot, Golu scooped some mud using his nose and slapped it on his head. The Python told Golu that this was the third advantage of having a long nose. Hearing all this, Golu expressed his gratitude towards the python and said that he would remember all of this. Thanking python thus, Golu went back to his family. Children, have you enjoyed the story? Let's discuss the question answers. Whom does Golu ask? Why don't you ever fly like other birds? Golu asked his tall aunt, the ostrich, why don't you ever fly like other birds? What's the next question? Which uncle of Golu had red eyes? The hippopotamus uncle had red eyes. Golu's relatives didn't answer his question because the questions were too difficult. Fourth one, who advised Golu to go to the Limpopo River? Mina. When Golu asked Mina if it knew what crocodile had for dinner, Mina asked Golu to go to the Limpopo River. Why did Golu go to the river? Golu went to the river because he wanted to find out what crocodile had for dinner. The crocodile lay on the bank of the Limpopo River. Golu thought it was a log of wood. What did the crocodile do to show that it was a real crocodile? The crocodile shed crocodile tears to show that it was a real crocodile. Come here little one and I'll whisper the answer to you. The crocodile said this because he wanted to eat Golu. Who helped Golu on the bank of the river? On the bank of the river Limpompo, the python helped Golu. Name two things the elephant can do with his trunk and two he cannot. Can you? The elephant could pluck a bundle of grass with his trunk. He could also use his trunk to get rid of the flies that irritate him. But the elephant couldn't pick things when it didn't have the trunk. Okay. So my dear children, let's wind up today's class. See you in the next class. Thank you.